So yesterday afternoon, I got tired of waiting around for my wife to set a new personal record for the amount of money you could lose in a single day playing video poker. I'm not talking like real poker. I'm talking about video poker, okay? So I mosey on to the sports book, and I want to see what's going on with the early afternoon NFL kickoffs. The games are all coming to a close. As I'm walking in, three guys are walking out. The one guy says, effing Patriots. I'll never bet those effers again. You know what the F word is there, okay? Big problem with the guy's attitude. Big, big mistake he is making. You can never feel that way about a team. Listen, you bet on them. You're a man, or maybe you're a woman. You know about 10% of our customers here are women, by the way. But you didn't know that. Take that to the bank. But uh, you can never hold a team responsible for a loss that you absorb. Because then, the next time around, like this guy said, you may miss a great money-making opportunity. And yet, I hear gamblers say it all the time. I hear so many handicappers saying, those SOBs, they screwed me the last time. I'll never back them again. Really? Why? Because you were dumb enough to bet them? You were dumb enough to pick them? I mean, seriously. It's gambling. It's a 50-50 proposition. You don't hold the teams, the players, the coaches responsible if you made the mistake of betting them on a wrong day. Day, okay? Case in point in my particular situation. Last week, on two Sundays ago, I had a big 15-dime play, which, as you know, is right near, near the top of the heap with San Francisco easily over St. Louis. Then on Monday night, I didn't particularly care last Monday night for the Seattle-New Orleans game, but I had a small five-dime play on the Saints. Okay, well, that game was over, you know, once Breeze committed the turnover, the Seahawks were off to the races, and it was all done. Game, set, match, easy there. But yesterday... I'm looking at the card Saturday night, and I'm handicapping the Sunday card. And I told you in yesterday's video report, it was a damn hard card. And then what do I do? I go out and give you two out of three free winners, right? Giving you the Buffalo Bills and the teaser winner on Cincinnati Baltimore. Loser, unfortunately, with the Raiders. But I told you, there was just one game, one game that was screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me, for all your worth. It was just popping out on the card yesterday. And it was the Sunday night game with the Saints. Did I hold the Saints personally responsible for costing me a little chunk of change last Monday night? Absolutely not. And it didn't stop me from immediately coming out with another 15-dime play, my third straight 15-dime play uh, the past three weeks in the NFL as I improved to 11-3-2 and with those selections with them this season. Reality, really 13-2 and since a couple of my candidates pushes, but they were wins. And the Saints absolutely dominated Carolina as I thought they would last night, ending the Panthers' eight-game winning streak. The moral of the story, guys, is, again, do not be like that guy walking out of the sports book I passed yesterday saying so-and-so screwed me, because when you go into handicapping a card with blinders, you are missing potential money-making opportunities, and you just can't be that way. Again, I don't celebrate the wins. I don't lament the losses. you got to stay even keel you got to control your emotions when you're doing this. And I'm not belittling gamblers because I'm telling you for a fact, so many handicappers have those chips on their shoulder the minute some team screws them. Can't be that way. Okay, let's talk about today's card. Of course, I'm Al DeBarco. You should know that by now. You clicked on the damn page to click and watch the video report, right? Uh, listen, you can save $26 off of any single purchase here at the site simply by using coupon code SAVE26. A guy you might want to consider buying is Brad Wilton today. His one and only 150 dime Monday night game of his career. Biggest Monday night release he has ever had. I mean, it is the ultimate bailout game, right? Well, he's certainly bailing on this one, right? 150 dime play your Dallas Chicago side. To put it in perspective for you, this is twice as big as a 75 dime winner yesterday on the uh, uh, Bengals by two touchdowns over the Colts. He is 3 and 1 this season with college 150 dime plays. This one is every bit as strong and $10 better. It's up a little over $6,300 since July. Um, you know, when he joined the site shortly before the Super Bowl last year, he had a 40 dime winner on the Ravens. This is almost four times as strong. Uh, Scott Delaney, biggest release of the NFL season, bang, cashed in yesterday. 100 dime winner, AFC total of the year. Cincinnati and Indianapolis going over the total for 27 points combined. And you got that winner for just $9.95 yesterday. Well, today he's coming right back with another one. 100 dime winner, number six out of eight, but more importantly, his fourth straight in the NFL this season, a perfect 3-0. And this one is on your over-under for Dallas-Chicago tonight. And keep in mind that over the past two and a half years, Scott in all sports combined 37-21-1 and one run with 100 dime plays. Um, his first 100 dime winner was three weeks ago, Seattle hammering Minnesota. The second one was Baltimore easily over the Jets a couple of Sundays back. And then, of course, yesterday, Colts and Bengals over with ease. He has won 19 of the last 31 days. 
uh, making $10 better is a little over $3,600. And today, guys, you can save money. Save $80 on the purchase of Scott Delaney's fourth consecutive 100 dime NFL winner simply by using coupon code. Are you ready? Scott 80. Scott 80. S C O T T and the number 80. Another promo today $5 play of the day. Brett Atkins, first college play of the year. 40 dime winner, number six out of nine. Coupon code Brett. Five. Brett 5, B-R-E-T-T, -T, and the number 5, you'll save $70 off the regular price. Congratulations going out to Anthony Red. Yesterday, you got his five, um, his NFL total winner number 5 in a row as a $5 play of the day release. Seattle and the 49ers just staying under the posted total. Uh, FYI, he has 49 football winner number 18 out of 28 going tonight, just as strong as his 49 winner you got yesterday for 5 bucks. I tell you the good, I tell you the bad. Craig Davis yesterday was going for winning day uh, number, let's see, he was going for winning day number seven out of eight. He failed. 100 dime teaser was a loser. Uh, a combination of the Bills, Bucks over, and the Broncos. Didn't have the right one there. Uh, so he fell yesterday. Kudos going out to Chris, John Chris Jordan. Not to Chris Johnson, that's for damn sure. Uh, because Chris Jordan had a 600-star play yesterday, his second biggest of the entire NFL season on the Broncos by 23. He promised a three-touchdown burial blowout, and that's what you got as Denver won by 23 over Tennessee and Chris Johnson. Tonight, his biggest Monday night release of the season, a 400-star play. Uh, Shawn Michaels, yes, Shawn Michaels actually lost a play yesterday. I don't say that too often over the past seven months, but he did lose yesterday. Um... And there is no truth to the rumor that Sean was one of the three guys cursing out the New England Patriots coming out of the sports book. Was not him, even though he had a 100 dime teaser winner yesterday. Uh, teaser potential winner yesterday on Cincinnati. Good news, New England. Not so good news. So he is now 39 and 16 with teasers over the past four years. And in uh, football, his profit over the past four years still $10 better, up uh, a little over 20 $2,500 and uh, still on a 42-19-2 NFL 100 dime run over the past uh, four plus years. Finally, wanted to make a quick mention of Trace Adams. Trace Adams was on a nice little roll, had a 1,500 star winner on um, Louisville on Thursday night. Was it Louisville on Thursday night? Yeah, had a 1,500 star on Louisville, had a 1,500 star winner on Bowling Green on Friday night. Uh, Saturday, he came with his first W wager uh, selection in college football, his college football total of the year. Lost that play, of course, but then came right back yesterday with 1,500 star winner number 8 out of 10 with Kansas City crushing Washington by 35 points. What did they cover? By, by 32 or something in that game? So, nice rebound for him, and I wanted to mention that as well. Let's talk about this game tonight. Guys, I'm going to tell you. This is a hard, hard game. I mean, I can give you a convincing argument for either side here between Dallas and Chicago. That's why my best bet is actually in the total tonight. I think that's the best bet in this particular game. I mean, you've got two teams that can throw the ball. Tony Romo, you know, statistically is having a very strong season because he's avoiding the turnovers. 24 touchdown passes, 7 turnovers on the year. You know, um, uh, Josh McCown. Uh, coming off two consecutive 350-yard-plus outings against the Vikings and the Rams. He has thrown one interception in 184 passes this season, uh, playing in uh, backup of uh, the oft-injured Jay Cutler. Uh, both of these teams with very strong wide receivers, Des Bryant and Jason Witten for the Cowboys. Of course, you got Brandon Marshall leading a dynamite receiving core for the uh, Bears. You've got two teams that can run the ball with Matt Forte getting the call often for the Bears. DeMarco Murray not getting the call enough sometimes for the Cowboys. Bad news for the Cowboys. Vaughn Dunbar, who combined with Murray to run for 145 yards on Thanksgiving against the Raiders, suffered a knee injury, season ender in that uh, Thanksgiving Day comeback win. So he is out. So that is going to hurt them. They're going to have to rely on the rookie Joseph Randall, who in previous opportunities hasn't delivered much this season. you got two teams that can't stop the ball. Uh, or stop the run. Uh, neither one of these teams do very good against the run. Neither one of these teams put much pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Uh, neither one of these teams uh, play any pass defense. <laughs> I mean, that's for damn sure. Uh, Bears because uh, they're injury riddled. The Cowboys because they got a bunch of untested Smurfs in terms of their size back in that secondary. Um, so again, you have teams that in many regards are mirror images of each other. I find it interesting the Cowboys uh, late last night were one-point favorite, and now the Cowboys are a one-and-a-half-point underdog. Is the public right? I'll tell you guys, I'm just being forthright with you. 
this is more of a guess and I really think if you played this game today 50 times each team would win half I think Chicago is to play here you know the Bears have been playing such a miserable ball such miserable ball and yet because the Lions keep screwing up they're right there still within a game of the NFC North lead so I'm gonna go with them in a really cold windy chilly night wind chill is supposed to be like minus two tonight at Soldier Field um, Again, I like Chicago, but uh, I want to put my money. You want to do, call Brad Wilton, or not call him, get his pick. Uh, I also want to highlight a particular college basketball game. I was playing tonight uh, against FDU. Uh, years and years and years ago, I used to work for a company called Dial Sports. We used to provide scoreboard updates in all cities across the country every five to ten minutes. Uh, we used to call FDU fairly ridiculous. Uh, that was their nickname. Uh, Iowa is a 30 and a half point favorite. And listen, Iowa has such depth. I mean, they can easily go some night six, seven guys in double figure scoring. And they're going to pound FDU on the boards tonight as they have done most opponents this season. And really, they could win this game 93 to 50 if they so desire. Here's the problem. Friday night, Iowa has a monster game against Iowa State on the road. Monster, monster game in Hilton Coliseum, okay, in Ames, Iowa on, uh, on uh, Friday night. You talk about the ultimate look-ahead situation. Think the equivalent of the Iron Bowl in college basketball for this particular uh, state, for Iowa. Iowa taking on Iowa State on Friday night. Does Iowa care about FDU tonight? Does FDU sneak up on Iowa as it did earlier this season, beating Seton Hall outright by four as a 22-point dog, uh, beating Rutgers outright by one as an 18-and-a-half-point dog? Or does FDU get hammered on the boards and offensively like they did against Princeton in their last game by 22 points on Saturday? It's a tough call. FDU is, play, is going to be playing its fifth straight road game, but I'll tell you what here. In this particular game, I think that Iowa will put all out. I think that they have the depth to pull away here for the big-time cover, but I don't think they will. I think that you have to consider the look-ahead factor here and go with FDU plus 30 and a half points in this game. That'll do it today, guys. Best of luck to you all, and I will catch you again on uh, Tuesday morning when we start a new betting week.